download our Revise It Right revision app for hundreds of videos, quizzes, exam questions, tutor support, and so much more. This video is about electrolysis. Now you'll remember we can use electrolysis to extract metals from their oxides, from their ores that are more reactive than carbon. But before this, we haven't actually said what electrolysis is. Now electrolysis is the process of using electricity to split apart ionic compounds, okay? Now these compounds can either be molten, okay? They can either be molten or they can be dissolved in a solution. A solution. Now you'll remember from our ionic compounds video, and if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it, that ionic compounds can only conduct electricity when they're molten, i.e. liquid, or when they're dissolved in a solution. And that is because when they're in their solid form, their ions are not free to move and therefore cannot carry a charge. And in electrolysis, we're using electricity to split apart ionic compounds. And if a, the compound cannot conduct electricity, then we cannot use electricity to do that. So our ionic compounds have to be molten or dissolved in a solution to work. Okay. Now, the basic apparatus for electrolysis is always very similar. You have some form of a container. Okay, which could be a beaker, it could be something much larger. Uh, so we have some form of container, and then you have two electrodes. You have one positive electrode, okay, so one positive electrode, which we call the anode. And you have one negative electrode, the one negative electrode, which we call the cathode. Okay, then these are connected by some power source. Now this can obviously be um, a very large power source, or source if need to be, or uh, probably what you've done in school is maybe um, on a smaller basis. So a power source, and then you're obviously needing to split up something, which is the ionic compound, and we can call this the electrolyte. Okay, so our very basic sort of apparatus for electrolysis is two electrodes, one of them positive, called the anode, and one of them negative called the cathode. These are connected by a power source and placed into a container. And we're using this to split up an ionic compound, which we can call the electrolyte. Now there is a nice uh, little mnemonic that you can use to remember the names of the electrodes, and that is PANIC. Okay, and that stands for positive anode, negative is cathode. Okay, so P-A-N, I see panic, positive anode, negative is cathode. Now you remember from the previous slide that I said that we can electrolyze uh, ionic compounds either as liquids or dissolved in a solution. Okay, now the outcomes which are different, so I'm gonna to talk to you about both of them separately. And first of all, we're gonna talk about electrolysis of liquids. Okay, now as we said, ionic compounds need to be molten or dissolved in order for them to be able to conduct electricity and to have free moving electrons, uh, ions, sorry. Now, within when we melt down our ionic compound, what we're going to get is we're going to get some free flowing positive ions and some free flowing negative ions. Okay, so remember our ionic compounds are made up of ions, positive and negative. So when we melt them down, we're going to get our free flowing positive ions and negative ions. And at the very basic level of electrolysis, the positive ion, okay, the positive ion, which is here. Now, remember that positive ion is always the metal, moves to the negative electrode. So the positive ion is gonna to move to the negative electrode because positive and negative attract. Okay, now we'll remember the negative electrode is called the cathode. So the positive ion, which is the metal, always moves to the cathode. This is where it will gain electrons to become an element. So it will gain electrons to become an element. Okay, so the positive ion, which has become a positive ion, remember, because it's lost electrons. That's how you become a positive ion. You lose electrons because electrons are negative Therefore, you lose electrons to become positive ion. So they're going to go to the negative electrode, which is the cathode, where they will gain electrons to become an element. 
Now the negative ion, which is always going to be the non-metal, so the negative ion, which will be the non-metal in the ionic compound, always the non-metal, will travel to the positive electrode, which remember we call the anode. So the negative ion moves to the anode. Okay. Now this will lose electron or lose electron or electrons to become an element. Okay, now remember that a negative ion has become a negative ion because it has gained electrons. Therefore, when it moves to the anode to, anode to become an element, it needs to lose those electrons that it gained. So at the anode, it loses electrons. So what we need to remember, one of the important things from this page, is that positive ions, which are metals, move to the cathode to gain electrons. Whereas negative ions, which are non-metals, move to the anode to lose electrons. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go through a real example to sort of put this into a bit of context for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to use electrolysis to split up potassium chloride. Okay, so we're going to split up potassium chloride. And therefore, potassium chloride is the electrolyte in this electrolysis. Okay, because that's what we're trying to split up. Now, potassium chloride is an ionic compound, and therefore it's going to be broken up into potassium ions and chlorine ions. Now, potassium ions are the metal, potassium is the metal, and therefore it's going to be positive. Okay, now potassium is in group one, therefore it's going to form a plus one ion, because it's only going to lose one electron. And chlorine, as the non-metal, is going to be negative ion. It's going to be the negative ion. Now, potassium is in group, uh, sorry, chlorine is in group seven, therefore it's only going to need to gain one electron, and therefore it will be a negative one ion. Okay, so potassium chloride is made up of K plus and Cl minus. And remember, we've dissolved it, we've um, melted these, these are molten, so not dissolved, we have melted them. Okay, so what's going to happen in this electrolysis is that the potassium ion is going to move to the negative electrode. So potassium ion will move to the cathode, which remember is the negative electrode. And it will gain, so it will gain an electron to become just potassium. So it was a potassium ion, it's going to gain an electron at the cathode to become potassium. Now, the chlorine, which is minus, is going to move to the positive electrode. So the chlorine ion will move to the anode. Now, at the anode, it will lose an electron. Okay, because to remember, to become a negative ion, it has gained one electron. So to become back an element again, it will lose an electron so to become just chlorine so the element chlorine okay so potassium ion will move to the cathode it will gain an electron the chlorine ion will move to the anode to lose an electron remember to download our revise it right revision app watch over 700 videos answer 4000 plus quiz questions over 1000 flashcards 1000 exam questions worksheets forums and get help from qualified teachers and so much more the link is in the description so what i'd now like you to have a go at is answering this question here so in each of these ionic compounds and they're molten State so which element will be produced at the anode, so which will be produced at the anode, and which will be produced at the cathode. Okay, now remember, the metal always forms a positive ion, and the non-metal always forms a negative ion. So pause the video now. Okay, so let's go through these answers. So zinc iodide, so in this example, zinc is a metal. Therefore, it will, it will turn into a positive ion. Therefore, it's going to go to the negative electrode. So it's going to go to the cathode. So zinc will be at the cathode and therefore iodine will be at the anode. In this example, lithium is a metal and therefore it will go to the cathode. 
and iodine, uh, so bromine will go to the anode. Iron fluoride, well iron's a metal, therefore it will form positive ions, so that will go to the cathode. And fluorine will go to the anode. Sodium oxide, well sodium is the metal, so it will go to the cathode. And oxide, oxygen is obviously the non-metal, so it will go to the anode. And finally potassium chloride, potassium is a metal and therefore it will go to the cathode. And chlorine is the non-metal, so it will go to the anode. So the important thing with that task is really getting your head around how the metal will form a positive ion and therefore go to the cathode. And the, the non-metal will form a negative ion and move to the anode. Okay. Remember, all of these metals here will go to the cathode. And what they will do is they will gain an electron. And all of these non-metals here will go to the anode and they will lose an electron. And that is really, really important to get your head around. So hopefully by now we've got our head around the fact that the ionic compounds are made up of positive ions and negative ions. The positive ion goes to the cathode where it will gain an electron and the negative ion will go towards the anode where it will lose an electron. Now remember when we're talking about redox reactions there is a loss of electrons and a gain of electrons and that is exactly what's happening here. Remember that oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. Okay, so if we go back to our example here, where we've used earlier, we've got potassium chloride. Potassium, as we said, will go towards the cathode, where it will gain an electron. Okay, so potassium will go towards the cathode, where it will gain an electron. And the chlorine, the chlorine, will go towards the anode where it will lose an electron. And therefore, if we put that in terms of our redox reaction, that the potassium has been reduced, it's gone through a reduction reaction, and the chlorine has been oxidized, i.e. it has gone through an oxidation reaction because it has lost electrons. So potassium has been reduced because it has gained electrons and chlorine has been oxidized because it has lost electrons. Now we can represent these by half equations. Okay, so we can represent them by half equations. So let's do potassium first. Okay, so here we start with a potassium ion. So we start with a potassium ion. Now our potassium ion is going to gain an electron. Okay, it's only going to gain one electron because it's only a one plus. So to become a normal element, it only needs one electron. So it's going to gain an electron, which is obviously negative. So we write our half equation as K plus plus E minus to show it has gained one electron. And this will then form potassium. Okay, not as an ion anymore. It's now a normal element. So it's now just potassium. So that is our half equation for potassium. And therefore, that shows a reduction reaction because it has gained an electron. We can also write our half equation for chlorine, okay, which is now the half equation at the anode. So chlorine, we start with Cl minus. Now chlorine is going to lose an electron. So it's going to form chlorine, okay, normal chlorine, now not an ion, the chlorine with no charge plus an electron because it's lost an electron it's also going to form an electron as well okay now chlorine you never see chlorine exist on its own okay it's in group seven they always exist in pairs so it's chlorine two okay now because it's chlorine two we have to then balance this equation out so there's two chlorines on this side but only one on this side okay so therefore we put a two here to balance out the chlorine now what that means is because we've we've uh, electrolyzed two chlorines, then we're also going to gain two electrons as well to balance out those electrons. So that is our balanced half equation at the anode. And this is our balanced half equation at the cathode. Okay, so potassium has been reduced, it has gained an electron. And at our anode, chlorine has been oxidized because it has lost an electron. 
Okay, so let's go through one more just so you can really sort of maybe get your head around that. And um, what we're going to do this time is we're going to do zinc chloride. Okay, so we're going to do zinc chloride this time. Now zinc is a metal and therefore we know that it's going to form a positive ion. Okay, and we know this is going to go to the cathode, so we know it's going to gain an electron. Okay, now because zinc is 2 plus, to make that an element, we need two electrons. So we're going to put two electrons here to show that it's been added to two electrons. And now let's go into make zinc. Okay, so zinc 2 plus, and we add it to two electrons, and that is going to make zinc. And that, remember, is at the cathode. So that is the half equation for zinc at the cathode. Now at the anode, it's we've said zinc chloride, so it's going to be chlorine. Chlorine is the non-metal, so it's going to form a negative ion. Okay, and because it's going to form a negative ion, it's going to produce an electron as well. So the chlorine plus an electron, which is minus. But remember, chlorine we always write as two. And therefore, we need two chlorine here. I'm going to need two electrons here. And that is the half equation at the anode. And in this example, our zinc has been reduced because it has gained an electron, whereas our chlorine has been oxidized as it has lost an electron. So the metal always gets reduced, and the non metal always gets oxidized. Okay, so again, in this video, there's been quite a lot to get your head around, so it's really important you now start to practice these techniques. So what I want you to do for each of the four um, ionic compounds is tell me which is the positive ion, which is the negative ion, and therefore what is formed at the cathode and what is formed at the anode. And then, if you can, write the half equations at the cathode and then the half equation at the anode and then we'll go through the answers together. If you want to stick around for the first answer and then do the next three, then you're certainly welcome to do that. But if you don't, then pause the video now. Okay, so let's go through the first answer here. So the positive ion is the metal, so it's going to be sodium. Okay, and the negative ion is the non-metal, so it's going to be chlorine. Okay. Now, what is then formed at the cathode? We know the cathode is the negative charged electrode, and that's where the positive ion goes. So we know that sodium is going to be formed at the cathode. And at the anode, we know that it's the positively charged electrode, and therefore the negative charged ion is going to go to it. So we know that Cl is going to be produced at the anode. But we all know that Cl now can't be, it doesn't exist on its own. So it's going to be Cl2 is going to form at the anode. Now let's write the half equation at the cathode, which includes our sodium. So we have Na+, plus, our sodium ion, and we know at the cathode it gains an electron. So it's going to be plus E-, minus, which is then going to form Na. Okay, so as you can see, the half equation is really about getting from here to here. How does that happen? And then at the anode, we have our Cl-, minus. And that is going to now lose an electron to become chlorine plus the electron it's lost. But again, we know that it's chlorine 2. It doesn't exist on its own. So it's going to be a 2 there and therefore a 2 there. Okay. So if you did follow along with the first one, pause the video now to go through the rest. Okay, so we now go through the rest of the answers. Uh, sodium bromide. So we here we know that the positive ion is again sodium. And the negative ion is bromine. So formed at the cathode is the sodium. And formed at the anode is the bromine. Again, it's in group 7, so they exist as in pairs. So it would be Br2. The half equation at the cathode will be the same as the one above. So Na plus plus the electron will form Na. And then the half equation at the anode, we've got Br minus is going to form Br. But again, it's going to be two because they exist in pairs, and therefore it's going to, they're going to lose two electrons because there's two of them. Therefore, we need to put two in. So that's our half equation at the anode. Now we've got potassium iodide. Okay, so potassium iodide. Again, the positive ion is potassium, 
and the negative ion is iodine. Formed at the cathode is going to be potassium and formed at the anode is going to be iodine. But again, it's in group 7, so it's I2. Our half equation for at the cathode is K plus, plus an electron to form K. And our half equation at the anode is going to be iodine, which is going to obviously lose an electron to become, so the iodine ion is going to lose an electron to just become iodine, plus an electron. But again, it's iodine, it's going to group 7, so there's two of them. Therefore, we need two, and we need two electrons. And finally, calcium chloride. The positive ion is calcium, and the negative ion is going to be chlorine. Formed at the, ca uh, at the cathode is going to be calcium, and formed at the anode is going to be chlorine and Cl2. So our half equation at the cathode is going to be Ca+. Plus. It's going to gain an electron at the cathode to become calcium. And our half equation at the anode is going to become chlorine ion, which is going to lose an electron to become chlorine plus an electron. But again, there's two, so two and two. And that should have been your answers for those. And if you got all those correct, well done. Okay, so we are in the next video, we're actually going to look at the electrolysis of aluminium oxide, which is what we need to learn. But for now, I hope you understood everything that went on there. You can now test yourself using the quiz and using the exam questions. And if there's anything you didn't understand, then please do get into contact with one of our tutors who will be happy to help.